Welcome to this week's virtual drasha. In this week's parasha, parashas Nasa, we are introduced to a fascinating individual, the Nazir. The Nazir is a person who decides to take a particular neder, a particular vow, a neder nezirus, and as part of that vow, he abstains from drinking wine, from grape products, and also abstains from coming in contact with the dead, Tomas Mace. And there's an incredible amount of literature and commentary regarding the Nazir. Is this the right thing to do, not the right thing to do? After all, again, we already have so many things which are prohibited. Is there a need to go ahead and prohibit additional things upon ourselves? But on a most basic level, the Nazir is an individual who is looking to lift himself up. The Nazir is the individual who is looking to make dramatic change in his life. And sometimes, for some of us, in order to make dramatic change, we have to do something dramatic. And we have to go ahead and kind of bring the normal rhythm of life to a screeching halt and just change direction. The goal is not to remain a nausea forever. The goal is not to go ahead and remain on this elevated status forever. But sometimes you have to hit the brakes. And you have to hit the brakes hard in order to pivot and in order to put myself on a different life trajectory or direction. But the Torah records something amazing. The Torah says, V'chiyamus meis alav bepesa pitom. This is Parak Vav Pasuk Tes. And the Torah records the following situation. The Nazir, undertaking his Nazir, Nazir says, undertaking his Nazarite vow. He's minding his own business, doing his own thing, trying to grow. And then what happens? Parak Vav Pasuk Tes, chapter 6, verse 9. V'chiyamus meis alav bepesa pitom. Then suddenly, chas v'shalom, someone dies right in front of him. So here the Nazir, who has been so careful to abstain from coming in contact with the corpse, the Nazir who has been so careful to abstain from going to a cemetery, from going to a levaya, from coming in contact with ritual purity, Rahman al someone dies right in his immediate proximity. V'time rosh nizro. And the Torah says, now he becomes Tame. And the Torah go, then goes through the whole process. What happens when the Nazir becomes Tame? Essentially, it brings the current vow to a screeching halt. And the Nazir has to start all over again. And the Beis Yisrael, the Ger Rebbe, says something absolutely amazing. He says there are two dramatic lessons to be learned from here. Number one, that sometimes in life, you try to grow. Sometimes in life, I try to do the right thing. But then circumstances occur, circumstances come up that bring my efforts to this screeching halt. You know, you ever have a situation in life where I genuinely want to turn things around. I genuinely want to live differently. I want to be different. I want to be better. I want to grow. And I make the conscious decision to do so. And I make the necessary changes to do so. And then Something happens totally beyond my control that brings all of my efforts to a halt. And sometimes when that happens in life, I wonder to myself, I say, Baruch Hu, I don't understand. I'm trying to do what's right. I'm trying to do what's good. I understand if I was trying to commit an Avera and you foiled my plans. Okay, but I'm trying to do a mitzvah. I'm trying to grow. I'm trying to be better. I'm trying to better myself and to better my life. So why are you throwing these obstacles in front of me? And says the Beis Yisrael, sometimes that's the way the world works. Sometimes at the end of the day, it's dafka when you're trying to grow most, when you're trying to really put yourself on the right path, when you're trying to really turn things around. That's sometimes when all the obstacles really come about. But the Beis Yisrael says something so beautiful. Those obstacles are there not to foil your plans. Those obstacles are there to test your resolve. There's a beautiful idea by the Kutzker Rebbe. The Kutzker says by the Akedah, you know, Avram Avinu was tested and asked to offer up his son, to offer up Yitzchak. And we know the story. Avram is ready to go through with it. He has Yitzchak on the Akedah, Yitzchak on the altar, about to slaughter Yitzchak. And then Maloch calls out, Avram al Tisha Yad Chalanar, don't shecht the boy. Incredible, incredible. The next section, Vayar Avram sees vine ayel nechaz b'svach bekarnov. That ultimately, again, he sees that there's a ram caught in the thicket, caught in the thorn bush by its horns. Avram goes over, untangles the ram, and slaughters it, offers it up as a carbon. And the Kotzker, Menachem Endel of Kotzk, asks a simple yet profound question. How did Avram Avinu know that Hashem wanted him to go ahead and offer up the ram? Maybe after all, when God says to Avram, 
don't go ahead and offer up the child. Maybe what God was saying is, Avram, no karbanas today. I don't want any offerings. I don't want any offerings. How does Avram know to go over to the thicket to untangle the goat, the, the ram, and offer it up? And the Kutzker says something absolutely amazing. The Kutzker says, you know, had the ram run over to Avraham and laid down at his feet, he would not have offered it. But when he saw that the ram was caught in a thicket, you ever tried to untangle the ram from a thorn bush? Okay, pr- probably not, but you can imagine the imagery, right? The ram struggles, the thorns are there, which means you're going to get cut, you're going to bleed, you may cut your flesh, you cut your clothing, the ram may hurt you a little bit as well. There's struggle. When Avram saw the ram caught in the thicket, when he saw the struggle, wherever there is struggle, there is holiness. Wherever there is struggle, there is Kedusha. Avraham understood that that ram that's caught in the thicket, I'm going to have to shvitz and I may even get cut and I may even bleed a little bit and it's going to be difficult. That's where there's Kedusha. You see, so often in life we have this erroneous mindset and we think that if I'm doing the right thing, then all of the pieces should fall into place. And if the pieces are not falling into place, then isn't that evident that I'm not doing the right thing? And amazingly, as counterintuitive as it sounds, sometimes it's just the opposite. Sometimes when we want to do the right thing, HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants to test our resolve. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants to see how committed we truly are to doing the right thing. Because the truth is, if doing the right thing was easy, everyone would do it. But what makes doing the right thing so special is that it often is accompanied by so much or preceded by so much struggle. You can make the right choices. You could do the right things. And yet, somehow, some way, things don't fall into place. You have to get into the thicket. You have to untangle the ram. You have to bleed. You have to schwitz. You have to get caught. You have to do. You have to exert yourself in order to make the good things happen. Intuitively, we think it's just the opposite. Make the right choices and everything falls into place. But practically, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, when you choose good, I want to make sure that you're really committed. And so sometimes the struggle is necessary in order to actualize even the most beautiful intentions and the beautiful goals and aspirations. And that, says the Beis Yisrael, says the Ge'er Rebbe, is the message of the Nazir. The Nazir is the individual who wants to engage in course-correcting activity. I'm tired of being mediocre. I'm tired of living a compromised life. I want to lift myself up. And yes, I have to engage in dramatic activity for a little while in order to plant myself on the right path. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu just wants you to know just because you make the right decisions in life does not mean it's going to be easy. And just because you make the right decisions in life does not mean everything is going to fall into place. Sometimes the right decisions come with an incredible amount of struggle. And sometimes the struggle is there even though I'm doing exactly what it is that HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants from me. And so the Nazir, poor Nazir, he's just minding his own business, doing his thing, trying to come closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And then out of nowhere, someone passes away right in front of him, bringing the entire Ned and Aziros crumbling down. And now the Nazir has to start all over again. But Nazir, don't despair. Don't despair. This is just HaKadosh Baruch Hu testing your resolve. This is just HaKadosh Baruch Hu seeing how committed you truly are. Because again, if doing the right thing was easy, everyone would do it. And if everyone would do it, it wouldn't be that meaningful. But what makes doing the right thing, what makes serving HaKadosh Baruch Hu, what makes having the right dreams, goals, and aspirations, something meaningful in life is because there's struggle. It's the struggle that makes it important. It's the struggle that makes it special. And it's the struggle that makes it holy. The Nazir makes the right decisions. But even when you make the right decisions, the struggle is there to test your resolve. Whether or not the person has to become a Nazir, is subject to Machlokis and the Gemara, right? Some say Nazir is a good thing, some say Nazir is not a good thing, but one thing is clear. In our own way, we each have to make the right decisions to put ourselves on the right path in life. We have to make the right decisions so that we can become the best version of ourselves, and sometimes we have to make the right decisions because I realize the life I'm leading and the path that I'm going on is not really the right one for me. We should find the wisdom to make the right life decisions. 
but we should also have to develop a proper staying power because we should never delude ourselves into thinking that once we make the right decisions, everything becomes easy and falls into place. Sometimes you have to go ahead and get the ram out of the thicket. And sometimes no matter how much you try to guard yourself from Tuma, the Tuma plops itself down right in front of you. But the golden life is don't give up. That when the struggle is there, sometimes too often, people give up on the meaningful decisions, on the meaningful approaches, on the meaningful derech in life because it becomes a little bit more difficult. May we find the wisdom to choose the right path for ourselves. May we find the strength to stick with it even when it becomes challenging. Wishing everyone a good Erev Shabbos and a beautiful Shabbos Kodesh.